Year 8. The Rule of Iba. A plague tears through head shoots. A plague known as melancholy. So many have died. So many good dwarves. So much has happened in the last year. Demons, sieges, rebellions. I can't rightly recall all of it, and for some reason my head is covered in blood. I wonder what that's all about. If it weren't for all the blood-soaked giant cave spider silk mittens I've acquired, I don't know how I'd ever cope. The last overseer is in a coma in his bed. So as the sole noble during this catastrophe, I feel it's my responsibility to lend a hand with damage control. Not literally, of course. I wouldn't do more than flip a lever if the end of the world came. But I will consent to giving orders to the dispirited masses. First, a review of our workforce. Bakanogami Endoksolon, minor, no job. Smuggins Ingistuthal, minor, rest. Babatron Fico Demath, garbage dwarf, rest. Sir Samvimes Elogem, engraver, rest. Duckbag Onul Zuglar, engraver, no job. Broken Box Olinitun, engraver, no job. Professor Bling Iklis Dumat, armorer, no job. Manuel Calavera Osted Bielral, bone carver, store item in stockpile. Rothen Themeshur Bomrek, the extractor, no job. White Cloak Nishi Seth, garbage dwarf, store item in stockpile. Tekud Iluneshtan, Cook, no job. Swatchester Mengsat, planter, no job. A most Zolak Sazir, siege engineer, rest. Robot Uprising Akmam Chilab, hauler, drink. Meng Steen Thadalzat, furnace teamster, no job. Frog Artob Dakost, vault dweller, store item in stockpile. Iba Lorlibad, tax collector, noble. Wandering Knitter, Lisat Zaneg, Ostkin, champion. Nemo 2342, Sazir Kudus Kodgutid, champion. Everyone on this list with no job is melancholy or insane, save for Professor Bling, who's just lazy. Right now we only have five dwarves capable of work. White Cloak the Mayor, Frog, our founder, Robot Uprising, Professor Bling, and Manuel Calavera. For some reason, they're all dragging useless things to the stockpiles, like adamantine or dog skulls. This is total madness, of course, and it needs to be stopped. I lay down a blanket order. As of this moment, there are no more stockpiles. With the exception of the food room, there will be no more hauling of items, no more crafting of totems, no more forging raw glass. Every job is cancelled, and every potential source of unwanted jobs is destroyed. We're in crisis mode, people. If we're going to survive this, we need to do two things. One, isolate and preserve the few dwarves who have the potential mental fortitude to survive this devastating depression. Two, encourage new, apathetic dwarves who are immune to this wave of despair to immigrate. Our first goal has two steps. First, I have to identify, out of all of our dwarves, who are the likely candidates for survival. Most obviously, we have Holistic Detective and Nemo 2342, our adamantine-clad champions. Nemo 2342 Sazir Kudus Kodgutid has been ecstatic lately. He took joy in slaughter lately. He's witnessed death. He talked with a friend lately. He slept without a proper room recently. He had a satisfying sparring session recently. He's lost a friend to tragedy recently. He admired a fine door lately. He has lost a child to tragedy recently. He was forced to endure the decay of a child. He ate a lovely meal lately. He admired his own fine container lately. He choked on smoke underground lately. He was disgusted by a miasma lately. He is married to Rothen Partnerwhip and has four children. 
out-of-print clasp-whiskered, Z2 anguished salve, Ost swim labor, and a tear labor fern. He is an ardent worshipper of Rimad blossom flukes. With the adamantine plate mail heart of a hardened warrior, they remain ecstatic as the fortress implodes around them. I wonder what would happen if, for instance, their spouses died. Rothen Themeshur Bombrek, the extractor, has gone stark raving mad. Huh. That probably won't end well. Having found a couple more hardened killers for our military, I set about constructing a partition, dividing head shoots into east and west. I didn't have the dwarf power to mine out a pocket fortress or haul our food or beds anywhere, so I had to get lucky while examining the architectural plans. Fortunately, I found a way. All I had to do was build one wall and carve out a short corridor, and the fortress was all but divided. All I had to do now was just lock a couple sets of doors, and the division would be complete. The best part was that my absolutely incredible room and my collection of blood-soaked mittens just happened to fall on the eastern side. I won't even have to move for the evacuation. Though my elation is short-lived, as more dwarves are dying all the time. Babatron Fikodemoth, garbage dwarf, is throwing a tantrum. Who what now Asolalter, royal guard, has died from thirst? Squad, the urns of lucidity, has been annihilated. Marcus C.Z. Osmelibesh, recruit, has died from thirst. Squad, the machines of chanting, has been annihilated. These two deaths have already caused Manuel Calavera to throw a pretty bad tantrum. It's only a matter of time before he snaps. The fragility of our current workforce brings to mind my second goal, attracting more migrants. Almost all of our mentally fit dwarves are champions who refuse to work, so we'll soon badly need more migrants. The primary obstacle to the goal is sitting in our depot right now. These merchants will bring back news of the terrible slaughter to the mountain homes, and then we'll never get more migrants. They must die, and quick. I briefly pondered how to do that with such limited dwarf power when I suddenly realized how simple it would be. I would use weapon to save the fortress. I'd always written it off as an overhyped, ineffective waste of valuable dwarf power, but right now I couldn't be any more thankful for its existence. It's now or never. I don't know how soon they'll leave. There's no floodgate, so I order White Cloak to deploy weapon manually. Miraculously, he survives, and the merchants start dying. Nemo terrifies the heck out of me by randomly dashing by as a barrel explodes, but... Fortunately, he's perfectly fine. He says he was only filling his water skin, but I think he was just being dramatic. My relief is short-lived, as everything begins to go horribly, horribly wrong at this point. Three of the merchant's guards made it out alive. They'll surely tell the tale of what transpired here today. I'd be more disappointed if I hadn't already despaired by word that the mountain homes already knew. Migrants refused to journey to such a dangerous fortress this season. How did they know so fast? It very quickly occurs to me that I never saw the liaison. He must have come and gone before I took over. This whole exercise was for nothing. And then things got really bad. I think there was a war dog in that doorway. Then there was lava in the doorway, and... And now... Son of Alias Amkinerush, child, has died in the heat. Huge globs of lava are falling down the central staircase, killing dwarves at random. Manuel Calavera narrowly avoids death as a child is instantly incinerated. Oh, oh my, this won't end well, will it? I hastily order the Chosen to evacuate the East Head Shoots. This situation is still salvageable. There's a sense of finality as the lock thuds into place. As of this moment, there are two head shoots. 
the relative paradise of the East with all the food, the sane military, and myself, and the West. The less said about the West, the better. Here's a list of the chosen of East head shoots, as well as the random stragglers who happen to be in the right place at the right time. Iba, miserable, awesome, noble. White Cloak, miserable mayor. Robot Uprising, miserable civilian. Frog, very unhappy civilian. Nemo 2342, ecstatic champion swords dwarf. Holistic Detective, ecstatic champion axe dwarf. Wandering Knitter, unhappy champion swords dwarf. Tie Skill, very unhappy champion swords dwarf. Mofetta, quite content elite wrestler. Viki, miserable elite wrestler. Captain Awesome the Second, ecstatic hammer dwarf. An unnamed dwarf, ecstatic guard slash axe dwarf. Sorellin, quite content hammer dwarf. Obmeister, miserable marks dwarf. Shadow Gamer, miserable recruit spear dwarf. Unfortunately, Professor Bling and Manuel Calavera didn't quite make it in time. I'm afraid they're stuck in the West. Fifteen dwarves and six of them are miserable and can be expected to succumb to melancholy as they hear their friends in West head shoots die. Eh, except for me. I won't give in to despair that easily. Captain Awesome the Second gives me the most hope, as she can still be demobilized in an emergency, though she won't be happy about it. At the very worst, we'll at least end up with two champions and a peasant, assuming Ty Skill or someone doesn't go on an insane killing rampage. With moderate precautions, the fortress will live on. Considering there was the whole of Mad West head shoots as well as a large pool of weapons lava between us and the main entrance, I figured we should cave a new entrance to allow new migrants into East head shoots. As a warning, this means that once weapons lava dries out, there will be no barrier between East and West, which would undoubtedly result in a huge influx of Western refugees coming after our food or else a humanitarian exodus of well-meaning East head shooters looking to feed the crippled in the West. Either way, we should be careful about that. I've locked the door anyway as a precaution. Already the division has begun to tear at us. Just the other day I saw White Cloak listening at the food stockpile door. It turns out poor Manuel Calavera, one of the last two sane dwarves of the West, was pleading for his life. I was so touched by the scene that I authorized the door to be unlocked. Unfortunately, things did not go as I expected. White Cloak fled to the west! This is terrible! We need to recover him somehow! How could we possibly... Well, it took all of five seconds before White Cloak got hungry and came back to eat. Manuel Calavera was following him the whole time, complaining, and so is now a happy resident of the East. And what of the last sane dwarf of the West? Professor Bling? I'm not sure how, but he seems to have broken his foot. Maybe he ran into a tantruming invalid. Maybe he got nicked by lava. Either way, he's now a hopeless cripple. There is now no longer anything worth saving in West Headshoots. We're on our own. <laughs>